Where was all this before I met you? On the periphery, just outside. There's always a window. Gun violence, racial violence, immigration, open carry militias, Sharia law, and anal sex. This episode covered everything. It sure did. And before we start talking about it, be sure to subscribe to GameSpot Universe so you don't miss any of our American Gods episodes or all the cool things that we do here. And now, let's talk about episode six of American Gods, A Murder of Gods. <laughs> So, to start off, there's a jackhammer, uh, just doing what jackhammers do, like 10 feet on the other side of this wall. So Sorry. we're gonna try to, uh, we're gonna try to project a little bit. Yeah. We apologize. Uh, but, you know, things happen as, as God wills it. Okay, so, speaking of gods, coming to America, we have Mexican Jesus. Mexican Jesus! Yep. So, it was a great, uh, coming to America, just, I mean, if nothing happened at the end, I would have loved it. You know, the guy almost drowns and he's saved by Mexican Jesus, uh, which was great. <laughs> While looking this up, I checked on Reddit, and I'm sure that you guys are gonna mention it if you're Spanish speakers, but a lot of the Spanish in this was made like it was maybe English initially in the script, then they translated it to Spanish. A lot of the dialect was was, kind of iffy for Mexican Spanish speakers. So when Jesus says, you already know my name, uh, a lot of people are gonna realize that that's not the way that a Mexican Spanish speaker would say that, but whatever, he's Mexican Jesus. Yep, he's Mexican Jesus. And also he was shot by someone who was using a Vulcan bullet. Was that a sacrifice to the volcano god that or we saw later on in the episode? Or was he just a self-sacrificing god? Was Jesus is just doing what Jesus does. Yep. This is just what I do. This is just a Wednesday for me. Right. I'll come back. Yeah. I'll, c I'll come back in three days. Yeah. You start to see like a glow around his heart as he's there and then the tumbleweed goes by and makes him a crown of thorns. It's a great reference to the whole sacred heart thing. Yeah. It was, it was really cool. So the sequence showing the Mexican Jesus uh, believers showing up in the United States and then the American Jesus supporters, uh, believers, killing them was this very interesting like war of the gods kind of thing. Like um, there's a reference in, in, in an Orlando Bloom film called Kingdom of Heaven that it, this just reminded me of, of these two warring nations going, if God is with us, then who can be against us? And the other side believing they believe in God. Um, but this show broke that down really well with, uh, Wednesday said it in a previous episode. Yeah, what did he, he say? There were multiple versions of Jesus. He's like, yeah, why Jesus could do with a little bit of trouble. He's been doing so well or something like that. So he's talking about all the different versions of Jesus that there are. So that's who we saw. We saw Mexican Jesus and we saw supporters of White, white Jesus, yeah. yeah, American Jesus. So it's not one God warring against himself. It's just different versions of the same God. They're, they're actually different gods. Whatever this is goes to soup. And soup don't win her husband back, if that's what soup is after. Why don't you put that on your fucking scales and weigh it? So how does Mad Sweeney know about Laura's scales after she died? Also, can I just say that Dead Wife and Ginger Minge are the best duo in this show? They're very fun to watch because they're both complete jerks. Like my friend, Jesus Christ, the only thing you need, dead wife, is resurrection. Did you just name drop Jesus Christ like you know a guy who knows a guy? I do know a guy who knows a guy. And the guy sitting next to that guy is your guy. So I'm pretty sure they're talking about Easter here because we have not seen Easter yet and we know that Kristen Chenoweth has been cast as Easter. So Kristen Chenoweth is going to be Easter who will probably do some resurrection stuff to help out Laura and Matt Sweeney. Hmm. I'm really excited to see Easter because I want to see if Easter has anything to do with uh, Jesus. Like if Jesus and Easter just, just hang out, even though Easter was kind of an older uh, God than yeah. Jesus. I'm, I'm just excited to see that whole Pantheon thing play out. Speaking of Pantheons, uh, Mad Sweeney mentions uh, to Salim, he knows where all the gods hang out. He knows he knows a place to find a whole bunch of gods. If you're a book reader, you probably have an idea of where this is gonna head, but just know that 
they're gonna go to a place where where everybody knows each other's. It's the cheers of gods. <laughs> they're going to the well, cheers of gods. They're all gathering. It's probably where Wednesday is trying to get all these old gods to go, but that's all we'll say. Maybe, maybe it is. Maybe. Actually, I have no idea. Even though we read the book and we think we know everything, <laughs> they've, they've been messing with us so much, might wind up that they all go to a roller rink. I'll tell you where to find a whole murder of gods, Demi and otherwise, every goddamn one of them. We talked about the Sharia law reference at the intro. Uh, Mad Sweeney just throws out this line uh, to Salim while they're, hang they're hanging out at a bar. He says, um, Shame I dream of Genie is what kept you from getting tossed off a roof long enough to make it to America. So this is a reference to the practice of throwing gay men from buildings in places under Sharia law. And it's said as such an aside. It's, it's interesting that the show will take on subjects like this, but then not even explain them. I mean, we've, we've had previous examples of just the, the throwing out a reference that we're not aware of, and then we um, will look it up and then say it to you guys, and you, some of you get angry that we haven't done the back research. And I want you guys to know that we looked into this, and it's something that we didn't want to look into, but the line, the, the, the backstory behind this line is way bigger than just the line. It's, um, it's real. I pray I find the gene. He is my afterlife. I knew him. We knew each other. So Salim is looking for the djinn, and so I think he has feelings for him, and he just wants to thank him or just learn more about him, as he says. But maybe his feelings will not be reciprocated. Like, they swapped lives. So we kind of get the impression from Mad Sweeney that the djinn is going to hang out with all of the other gods uh, at wherever they're gonna hang out. But just imagine you're hanging out with all your buddies and then your, like, one-night stand shows up with your car keys. Um... Oh, this is awkward. Oh, what are you doing here? Are you trying to deliver my car? I don't really want it. It's got poop in the backseat. <laughs> you can keep that. It's, it's yours now. Hey, I know a charm that can lift grief from a grieving heart. Do you know a charm that can stop bleeding? Okay, so Wednesday is so obviously Odin. Like, it's just obvious now. Like, they so, call him Woten, they call him Grimnir, they call him Grimnir again in this episode. And then he lists a bunch of the charms that he knows. And if you've seen our Old Gods video, you know that Odin has 18 charms. So he just starts listing them off. So here are some of them. No, I do, and I know a charm that can cure his sickness and pain. I know a charm that can turn away the weapons of enemies. So we see a couple in this episode. Uh, Shadow obviously has a grieving heart, and uh, Wednesday helps him out with that. Uh, Shadow's hurt a bit, and he uses a charm to do that. The one thing that we're not really sure if it's a charm or not is when he pees <laughs> into the smelter. Is that a charm, or is he just like, I'm cursing? He's like, I'm putting a curse on him. I don't know if that's a charm, but I it's something. I curse my toilet every day. If anything, it's a sick burn. <laughs> So then when Vulcan and Wednesday meet, Vulcan calls him Grimnir, and he also later calls him Glad of War, so he's Odin. He's Odin. He's totally Odin. Odin. And he also makes a reference to when he's sacrificed himself. He's like, you could sacrifice yourself, you've done it before. So this is a reference to when Odin hanged himself and stabbed himself with a spear. This was on the world tree, Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil. And so he did that in order to learn all the charms that he now knows and just gain the knowledge to control worlds. So he that's, controls worlds. That's the reference. Don't try that at home, kids. No, it's not gonna work. What do you need from me, Big Daddy? I need you to believe in me. Uh, I always have. Uh, if you've read the book, you probably realize that the beverage that Vulcan and Odin are sharing is something called Soma. In the book, it's distilled concentrated belief. Soma is the name of a moon god, uh, also known as Imrita, which is the nectar that makes gods immortal. So there's so many religions mixing, but I mean, they like booze from a different culture. That's cool, gods get down. That's why Shadow can't have any. Yeah. None for you. Why so much not good enough? Wine cellar is overflowing these days. Not for you. So we referenced this in the clip at the beginning of the show, but if you're a Neil Gaiman fan, you're gonna notice that there's a lot of 
like references to things slipping through the cracks. If you read Neverwhere, um, when Wednesday says, you know, on the periphery, just outside of reach, Neil Gaiman loves writing stories about things that you just can't see, just slightly beyond your vision. And in American Gods, all the gods are all around us and we just can't see them because we're, we're, we haven't gone past that veil. I think it's pretty cool. Mr. Wood was the trees, Mr. Wood was the forest. Well, he was a very old god who saw something very new. He saw a god fearing society turn towards complete industrialization. So confirmed, Mr. Wood was the character that we saw at the end of the last episode with the tree attacking Shadow, and he was a god, an old god, and now he saw what was happening with all the new gods and how he can become a better newer god and killed all the trees, killed the forest, saw industrialization and became something else. So that's an example of an old god reinventing himself and becoming a new god, which is kind of what was foreshadowing for what Vulcan was going through. The scene of him getting, like, removing the parasite from Shadow reminded me of The Matrix so much. It was awesome. It's moving! <laughs> Jesus Christ, that thing's real! So, to start out the Vulcan scene, you see a guy, he's smiling, he's the best boss in the universe, he grabs a railing and falls into a smelter. This guy is a sacrifice to Vulcan. Another cool thing that this show references is insurance companies putting value over, like, money over people, which happens so often in insurance industries, but they're like, you know what? We're not gonna redesign the whole factory just because managers are falling into the smelter. It only happens a couple times a year. A couple times a year! That's so crazy. I mean, I'm sure the uh, the parade was some type of ritual that was giving him more god influence stuff. He was loving it. They all fire the, the, they're all sacrificing bullets to him. The whole thing was referenced, like, was, was made just to give him belief. Um, so about Vulcan's backstory, uh, he comes from, like, his inception is Roman mythology took over for Greek mythology. So in Greek mythology, he was Hephaestus. And uh, he was so ugly when he was born that his mother threw him off Mount Olympus. He landed in the ocean and broke his leg, um, which is why he has the limp. You tell him we were here. Yes. Are they coming? Oh, yes. So it's revealed that Vulcan has betrayed Odin, so he's teamed up with the new gods, totally sold them out, but he still makes that gigantic blade for him, that crazy sword, and dies from it, so... He's also an example, just like Mr. Wood, of someone who modernized, an old god who modernized, and teamed up with the new gods. Yeah, I think that it's, uh, they tried to do this with Wednesday. The Odin missiles, the, the Vulcan gun factory. Um, I don't know if Mr. Wood has a, a rebranded example of himself. Maybe he just, you know, bought in to, you know what, I'm gonna be a tree parasite weirdo. How about that? Yeah, sure, sure. we're good with that, as long as you're on our team, pal. Yeah, but I think this is important because it shows that you can team up with the new god successfully. Well, I mean, he met his demise, but you, you can, it's possible, and that's, what happens because we didn't see that in the books. Um, one small Easter egg for Brian Fuller fans, the filming location for Vulcan's house is the Red Dragon's house from Hannibal. Uh, so it's the same filming location, which, you know, if you like something, just keep doing it. So Shadow in this episode is definitely the Morty to Wednesday's Rick. He's just yeah. like, oh shit, oh shit, Rick. What are we, what's going on, oh, Rick? No, what did you do? What did you do? What did you do? You chopped off a guy's head and you kicked him into a vat of molten steel. I need an extra pair of hands. Oh jeez, Rick. What'd you do to Frank? It's pretty obvious, Morty. I froze him. Now listen, I need your help, Morty. Last thing, uh, there was another ritual scene in this, but it was an actual prayer ritual. And it was right next to Laura's ritual of smoking a cigarette the shots were the exact same. Guys, I'm right about this. They keep <laughs> slowing, they're doing slow-mo shots of rituals in people's lives. And I think it's pretty cool. Nice job. The only other Easter egg that I spotted was the satellite going over them when Odin or Wednesday says, someone's always watching. So that's the only reference to the new gods in this episode. To Twitter. So at Put You In Suspense asks, when Laura and Shadow kiss, her heart starts beating again for a moment. Think that might bring her back to life. 
Hmm. I don't think it's gonna heal her in any way. I think she's rotting for good and that can't be reversed. But her heart did beat, so maybe she will feel some life if they were to get more physical. I don't think it'll resurrect her, though. It wasn't in the book at all. Um, I think that maybe it might be a, a sideline that they go into. I think that she's going to find a temporary solution, maybe with Easter, as we said. But I think that this, like, you know, she needs to hunt Shadow to, to get her life back thing is going to continue. Um, and I think it might. Like, I think that, I think that if, you know, they get down, I think maybe, uh, maybe uh, she'll be brought back to life. She's dead. She's on a time limit, though. Mm, yeah. So that's it for this week. If you have any questions, shoot them over to Buddy, because I'll be at E3, but he will be taking over solo or with a special guest. We'll see. What and do they on, look forward to? On Thursday, we're doing an intro breakdown. Um, I have the director uh, of that intro talking to me uh, on the interwebs currently, so we'll find out what we, uh, what we can find out. Cool. See ya.